1994, the Pushkin Museum in Moscow unveiled their newest exhibit, priceless artifacts from ancient Troy that was taken from Germany during World War II and had been considered lost. Prime's treasure was displayed in the Royal Museum of Berlin until the beginning of the Second World War, when Soviet soldiers confiscated it from the Germans. Hidden for more than 40 years, only the museum director and a curator knew that they were in possession of the missing collection until they were put on display. Prime's treasure carries cultural ethos because it, like the Pantheon marbles, represents an ongoing debate about art restitution, and people should care because the owners of Prime's treasure could change the global precedent of war reparations. Since the Enlightenment, archaeologists and scholars have been searching for the ruins of Troy, the ancient Grecian city that was once the battleground of Homer's famous Trojan War. In 1873, businessman and amateur archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann became convinced that he had located it. Son of a poor grocer, Schliemann grew up with a fascination about Greece and passionately believed in the validity of Homer's historical accounts. His skill with languages led him to emigrate several times until settling in Russia during the Crimean War, where he slowly built up his fortune. He began studying archaeology in his 30s and determined the ancient city of Troy to be located in Turkey. He began excavations for Homer's Troy in 1871 and discovered city ruins and a massive trove of treasure, which he theorized to be the property of King Priam. Priam's treasure included a pair of gold diadems, 8,750 gold rings, and scores of objects in gold, silver, copper, and electrum. It was later discovered that he had actually dug through the Homeric layer and had excavated a city that predated Homeric Troy by a thousand years. Schliemann smuggled the artifacts out of Turkey and kept them in his personal collection. Ottoman officials were unaware that he stole the cache of treasures until a picture of his wife, Sophia, wearing the gold diadem became public. He was sued and banned from excavating in Turkey again until a few years later, when he relinquished part of the treasure to gain access to the archaeological dig to continue his work. The remaining artifacts were given to the Royal Museum of Berlin, where they stayed until the war. For safekeeping, they were transferred to a bank basement and then an air raid bunker until a Soviet trophy brigade discovered the catch and took possession of it as reparations for the damage done to their country during the war. Before World War II, Germany and the Soviet Union shocked the world by signing a non-aggression pact, promising to take no military action against one another for 10 years. Hitler broke this deal just two years later by sending troops to invade the Soviet Union. The USSR paid the harshest price during the war. Though the numbers are not exact, an estimated 26 million Soviet citizens died during World War II, including as many as 11 million soldiers. For every American soldier killed during the war, 80 Soviet soldiers died fighting the Germans. They didn't just suffer loss of lives either. They lost innumerable cultural treasures and paintings after the Nazis' 1941 invasion. According to official statistical data, more than 160 Soviet museums and 4,000 libraries were damaged during the war, and as many as 115,000 books were destroyed. Their most notable loss was the destruction and looting of the Amber Room in Catherine's Palace. Many, including the retired head of the Pushkin Museum of Moscow, would argue that the Soviets rightfully deserve the artifacts as reparations for the destruction wrought on their country during the war. All I wanted to say is that the generation of Germans alive today isn't responsible for Hitler in the invasion of the Soviet Union. But to be entirely clear, the issue of trophy art is primarily one of an ethical nature. It has to do with moral and not so much financial compensation for Russia. One cannot simply invade a country and try to stamp out the roots of its culture as the Germans did. Germany argues that they've repaid their debt and deserve their cultural heritage back, but recent laws passed have made their fight difficult. International law passed after World War II makes it so that treasures and artifacts stolen during wartime must be returned to their original owner, but that law isn't retroactive and therefore doesn't apply to Prime's treasure, which was taken before the war ended. In addition, in 1989, Russia passed a law declaring all property taken during World War II as federally owned property. However, most art historians don't acknowledge the true owner of Prime's treasure. Schliemann stole the artifacts out of Turkey and had no legal claim to it, nor did the Royal Museum of Berlin. Despite trading a portion of the treasure back, Schliemann never formally paid for what he took, and therefore the rightful owners of Prime's treasure is Turkey. Russia stole the relics from thieves, not the true owners. More than Germany, more than Russia, Prime's treasure is Turkey's national heritage, and if either country was truly contrite and wanted to make reparations for their actions during World War II, then all claims to the cash should be dropped, and they should be returned to Turkey. This is what the monuments men stood for, returning art to their rightful owners and refusing to allow important cultural treasures to be reduced to plunder. If anybody outside of Turkey, uh, if he was offered an artifact from Turkey, must know that it is smuggled, it is illicit.